It's one of the world's most attractive tourist destinations and one of Europe's most populous cities. However, the City of Light is struggling to shine in one aspect, the place given to nature in its 20 districts. Aware of this problem and in response to growing discontent among residents, the City Council has launched a number of initiatives to make Paris greener. Urban improvement, cleaning up the Seine, developing public transport, the projects are increasing and that's what we're going to see today in this new episode of Looking For. To kick off our exploration, it's hard to think of a more symbolic project than the renovation of the world's most beautiful avenue, the Champs-Élysées. This essential artery in Western Paris attracts some 250,000 tourists every day. It stretches for almost two kilometers from the Place de la Concorde to the Arc de Triomphe, which sits at the very top of the avenue. A monument visited by over 1.5 million people a year. But the condition of the avenue has declined sharply in recent years. This artery is shunned by Parisians, who criticize it for being too expensive, overcrowded, polluted, and even stressful. As proof, only 82 people lived on the Champs-Élysées. As a result, a number of architectural firms have been looking at how best to breathe new life into this showcase of France. This is particularly true of Philippe Chiambaretta's firm, PCA Stream. The Paris-based firm conducted a two-year study of the world's most beautiful avenue, its uses and possible future developments. This work, carried out in collaboration with some 50 researchers, even led to an exhibition on the subject. A mission that has clearly paid off, since Philippe Chiambaretta and his firm are now involved in the re-enchanted Champs-Élysées project, which began in May 2022. The aim is to enhance the area in two phases of work. The first aims to make the avenue as elegant as possible for the Paris Olympic Games to be held in summer 2024. Place de l'Etoile will see the pedestrian area around the Arc de Triomphe expanded. Three quarters of the paving on the entire avenue has been repaired. More than 500 trees have even been planted. In addition, the lower part of the avenue will be redesigned to make more room for vegetation. The roads running through the gardens will be returned to pedestrians. The terraces of the existing shop signs will be harmonized with a single piece of furniture. Presented recently, it will be green in color with a gray canvas on the outside and a motorized retractable awning. A three-frame terrace will cost an average of 400,000 euros. Restaurants will be responsible for this investment. Installation will start at the end of December. Total estimated cost for this first stage, 30 million euros. For the second part of the project, the schedule is still unclear. Work is scheduled to continue until 2030. Nevertheless, the intention seems clear, to give more space to pedestrians and cyclists and thus reduce the role of cars. Another trend is to continue planting the avenue. Consideration is being given to the creation of a continuous green promenade from the Jardin des Tuileries which will in particular cut through the Place de la Concorde, which today is totally mineral. This square will be one of the main spots of the coming Olympic Games. The arrival of this competition is a major challenge for the city, which wants to give the best possible image by taking advantage of the media exposure of an event watched by billions of people. To this end, the city has been undergoing a major transformation over the last few years, but for its Olympic Games, Paris wants above all to win the Green Medal for Ecology. To this end, it is planning to organize swimming events in the Seine. A sort of return to basics, since at the 1900 Paris Olympics, the swimming events were held in the river. Since 1923, however, it has been forbidden to swim in the river. This promise of a return to the water is not new. In 1990, the mayor of Paris at the time, Jacques Chirac, declared that he would bathe in the Seine in front of witnesses to prove its good condition within three years. More than 30 years later, the problem remains unresolved. Paris mayor Anne Hidalgo has the same ambition as Jacques Chirac. The aim is not to clean up the river and its tributary, the Marne, but to depollute them. 
To this end, a budget of 1.5 billion euros has been released. The first task is to prevent the uncontrolled discharge of wastewater, particularly during storms. A solution is currently under construction. It takes the form of a vast underground water purification network. Giant underground pipes will carry the water to huge underground storage basins. To give an idea, the one built under the Austerlitz district will be able to collect almost 50,000 cubic meters of water, the equivalent of 20 Olympic swimming pools. It is due to go into official service in early 2024. Another avenue being pursued is river disinfection. On August 20th, 2023, the swimming section in the Seine of the Paris 2024 triathlon test event had to be cancelled. The results of the water analysis were negative. The main cause was an abnormally high concentration of Escherichia coli bacteria, which can cause food poisoning and infectious diseases. To combat this phenomenon, innovative water purification plants have been designed. They improve the quality of the water discharged into the Seine by treating it with performic acid. Once injected, this eliminates bacteria with no persistence in the water. A system that looks beyond the Olympic Games. Indeed, after the Olympiad, the city aims to open at least three bathing sites by 2025. All that remains is to convince the population to take the plunge, as according to a 2021 survey, 88% of French people would not want to swim in the Seine. A figure that places the river at the bottom of the list of French people's favorite waterways. Nevertheless, the Seine will be part of the Games whatever happens, as the opening ceremony will take place partly on the river. Another huge project underway is public transport. Every day, 8.5 million people use the public transport system in Paris and the Isle de France region, and it is often criticized for being overloaded and for failing to cover the entire territory. Yet this network is vital for the city. It must offer a credible and viable solution to the car and thus reduce the emission of greenhouse gases. This is essential if the city is to achieve its goal of carbon neutrality by 2050. To meet these objectives, the Grand Paris Express was designed. Begun in 2015, the work currently underway is scheduled to last until at least 2030, and the cost of the project continues to rise. Initially estimated at 22.6 billion euros in 2013, this figure has jumped to 42 billion euros by 2020, almost half of which has already been committed. In total, the project calls for the creation of 200 kilometers of additional track and almost 68 stations. The plan involves extending some existing metro lines, including Line 14. In addition, four new automated lines will be built, with one aim, to better serve the surrounding towns and cities. Access to airports has also been rethought. Line 17 will serve Charles de Gaulle to the north of the capital, while Orly will be accessible via lines 14 and 18. Finally, the extension of Line E will serve the west of the Ile-de-France region as far as mont la jolie For the time being, these routes have yet to be finalized, as work on them is running extremely late. For the 2024 Games, the two new lines 16 and 17 should be in service to serve the Olympic Village, but the delay in the work will unfortunately mean that these lines cannot be inaugurated on time. A rail project is also underway at Paris stations. Many of them have been or are being modernized. Each time, the aim is to make public transport run more smoothly and reduce the energy consumption of these transit hubs. While the Gare Montparnasse recently completed its major facelift, the Gare d'Austerlitz is still undergoing work. After five years of hard work, the large passenger hall, where thousands of passengers pass every day, has been completely renovated. It will be visible from December, when the immense scaffolding will be completely dismantled. Another station whose redevelopment has had its share of ups and downs is the Gare du Nord. Dubbed Station Or, the first project called for a complete renovation of the station, doubling its surface area. But the gigantic project was ultimately rejected on the grounds that it was out of touch with the Gare du Nord's surroundings, and above all, that it was over budget. Initially expected to cost 600 million euros, the bill had already climbed to 1.5 billion as the project was announced. 
Another problem was that Europe's busiest station would have been under construction during the Olympic Games. In the end, the SNCF abandoned this project in favour of Horizon 2024, a less costly plan to improve the flow of dense traffic. A total of 30 million euros has been set aside for the project, which includes the creation of a 1,200 space bicycle hall and a new bus station. In all cases, the city wants to project the image of a more eco-friendly city. The place of bicycles in Paris is a good example. To encourage sustainable mobility, a major bicycle plan has been announced. A budget of 250 million euros is intended to make Paris 100% cycle-friendly by 2026. This will involve harmonizing the existing network and creating 150 kilometers of new cycle paths. In June 2023, the City Council voted in favor of a new local urban planning scheme. This specifies that no construction project may exceed 37 meters in height. However, the regulations do not apply to projects launched before this date, such as the famous Tour Triangle. Work on this 180-meter tower began in 2022 and is scheduled to last until 2026. Estimated cost, 660 million euros. This skyscraper could well be the last building of this scale to be constructed within the walls of Paris. The building, designed by the architectural firm Herzog and de Muron, is to house not only offices, but also a panoramic restaurant, hotel, cultural centre, and even an observatory, which should offer a breathtaking view of the city. Other emblematic buildings, such as the Montparnasse Tower, are to undergo a thorough renovation. A renovation that also includes an ecological aspect. Among other things, a greenhouse for agricultural production is to be set up on the tower's roof. Paris's new urban development plan has also enshrined a desire to create more green spaces in the city. The City Council is aiming for some 300 hectares more by 2040. To achieve this, the new plan includes the creation of 52 hectares of parks and gardens. This will be the case in the north of Paris, with a large 25-hectare metropolitan park in the 18th and 19th districts. But despite all these factors, this goal seems very ambitious. By way of comparison, between 2006 and 2021, only 77.7 .7 hectares were created, according to 20 Minutes newspaper. On average today, this ratio is around 8 square meters per inhabitant if we take into account the Bois de Boulogne and the Bois de Vincennes. Without them, it falls to 3 square meters. I hope you've enjoyed this exploration of Paris. Thank you for watching and see you soon on Looking For. Goodbye.